Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rock Your Best Life podcast. With me today, I have the beautiful Sherry Siegel, um, and she's a friend of mine who lives down just down the street. Um, and I have known her for a little bit, but she does have a booming um, salsa business, amongst all the other things that she does. So welcome, Sherry. Thank you, honey. It's nice to see you. Yeah, you too. Um, <laughs> you look gorgeous as ever, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I took a shower just for this. You know? oh. I've been working today, so yeah, I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you look beautiful too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I've been um, I've been just hanging out at home today. It's a snowy day out there, um, and and just uh, making my dog. I make my dog's dog food, and so I've been doing. I've kind of been doing that all day. <laughs> that is cool. That's really good for them, right? Real healthy stuff. Yeah. Oh, and they love it. I mean, they go. Oh crazy. yeah. They go crazy for it, and it's really simple to do. Um, once you figure it out, I guess, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. And so um, I wanted to have you on today because you have just been taking off with your salsa uh, business. And I'm really, I'm just curious, you know, um, of course, we'll get into like all the other things that you do too, because um, you are a busy lady. You do so much. <laughs> I am a busy lady. It's crazy. And then throw in taxes on top of that. You know, it's like, ah, there's no time, you know, but I'm good with being busy. You know, I think busy is really healthy. I think busy is healthy. Not being busy can lead to a lot of things, you know, depression and all sorts of, you know, bad stuff. So, you know, stay busy. It keeps you young, keeps you active. That's all good. All good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, you're you're a living uh, testament to that because you are just a firecracker and <laughs> and um you go snore do you ski or snowboard i know you do i ski okay. i ski yeah yep. you're you're a ski bunny <laughs> yeah and, and, that's the name the blonde bomber that comes from purgatory oh that's my it. nickname yeah that's oh, my nickname okay since i was three. Oh, very okay. little Oh, and so I was going to ask you how that came about. So that that comes from skiing, um, and the yes. snow, and the snow and the snow bunny and all that stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. So when I was about three years old, I started skiing purgatory, and my my dad was an amazing skier, but kind of a hothead, had a temper, and I had older brothers and sisters, but. You know, it was back in the time where nobody really watched their kids. They just like, go do that and meet me back at the car at, you know, four o'clock. And, you know, we had to be the first ones on the hill and the last ones off the hill to get our monies, you know, out of the family pass. And, you know, and so I'd be skiing by myself. And I was this crazy little blonde kid with no poles because, you know, I'd drop them off the lift. Dad would have to get them for me. And he's like, no poles for you. That's it. So I just kind of bombed the hill and come down and I'd wait in line and get in line. And if nobody picked me up and set me on the chair, then, uh, you know, it would hit my back and push me over the edge. So they they just kind of affectionately called me the blonde bomber and it stuck and it's been my nickname ever since. So when we started the salsa business, it kind of turned out to be a really easy name to come up with. Oh yeah, that makes perfect sense. Thank you for um, telling me all about that. Because yeah. I, I didn't know. I thought it was just because you were blonde and you're a bombshell, you know? Mm. <laughs> well, I'd love to think that, but yeah, it started way early on, so. Okay, well, I want to start off with asking you, because um, I know you've had a couple different other businesses. Yes. Um, and so um, I want to ask you how you started, you know, just the self-starter um, kind of mindset where you want to work for yourself, you want to be an entrepreneurial um, person. Has that always been instilled in you or is that something you kind of developed along the way? Well, you know, I think it comes from a little bit from maybe being a, a little bit of a, a renegade, not wanting to kind of abide by everybody else's rules. I mean, it's kind of funny. I've been a fashion designer. I've had my own clothing business, leather business, and then, you know, work for a rock and roll radio station, things like that. So nothing's ever been too serious in my life, but um, 
But you know, you get to the point like when when I started the salsa business, it was really great because it was a, it was an accumulation of all the things I've learned from all the businesses I've had over the years, and I decided not to take anything serious and do it kind of my way and have fun with it. And I tell you, I think it's really struck a chord with people. They love that you know I did the artwork for the label. You know, we 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 name them really fun stuff. But you know, we we just have a fun time but you know I do think that everybody has it in them to be an entrepreneur but not everybody can kind of maintain it it's it's one of those things where you have to get up every day you know at, at six, six seven in the morning take a shower get ready for your day and and treat it just like you would a job and if you don't then it's not gonna it's not gonna be successful so that's the only problem with entrepreneurship some people just don't uh, put that time into it. It's it's almost like they'll do it if they're, you know, being watched by someone and they have to be there hour by hour. But but not if if you can get away with it, they'll go skiing instead or what have you, you know. So yeah, I think it's one of those things that you have to be sort of um, a certain personality to pull it off. You know. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I mean, um, there's a lot of more people these days, you know, starting businesses online yeah. and and all that stuff um but yeah you're right you have to have the mi the right mindset with you need to treat it like it's your business you know you do. like a you, know, you, you gotta treat it like a nine to five you gotta set your hours you do you know it's not yeah. play it's not play time right <laughs> no and you know at the radio station too as an account executive um i pretty much run my own show too. So if I wasn't a self-starter, if I didn't go out there and work, I wouldn't make any money. And, you know, it's one of those things where you need to get out there and do what you do. And, you know, you can take a short day once in a while or things like that, but um, maybe go and, you know, uh, hobnob with people up at Purgatory or something. If, if, you know, there are potential clients up there or things that are going on that would be great on the radio. But, oh, um, yeah. you know, it's, it seemed to help a little bit, too, because of the radio. I know everybody. I've been in the community and all the businesses and things. And so um, it seemed to sort of help when it came to the business of the salsa. So we've been really successful in a very short time. We've only been in business now for about seven months. And oh, we're in about wow. 70 retail stores still already. And we have a website and all of that, too. So that's that's a little slower in launching, but the but the retail stores, it's just been amazing. Wow. Yeah. I, and and it's, you know, it's really taken off because I remember, you know, um, a few months back, you told me that yeah. you had you had started the salsa company um, and you gave me some salsa to try. And yeah, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then I started just seeing it in the in the local grocery store down the street from us. Yeah, and then it was funny because I w I saw you in there one day, and then everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, you know the salsa lady." <laughs> <laughs> I know it's funny. So it was it's like you were funny. you were you're a local celebrity, and I was like, "Yeah, I know Sherry. She's <laughs> awesome. She's an awesome lady." <laughs> Well, it's funny. I used to come in and people say, hi, Sheree, you know, they, they know me and stuff. But now I come in and, you know, the girls at PJs, they're so cute. They have a blonde bomber. And, you know, um, really funny, it, it has become kind of a silly thing, you know, because, you know, I'm on the label. That's, that's supposed to be me. I'm the blonde bomber. But I come in, I was up at the Nugget, and Brian and I went to have dinner, and um, he was there first, and I walked in, and the whole place was like, the blonde farmer, and, you know, I'm not <laughs> completely comfortable with, you know, with crazy people yelling at me, but, um, but yeah, it's really been fun. I've actually been asked to maybe draw logos and help people with marketing their businesses, because um, they've seen, you know, they've seen what I've done with the blonde bomber, and, you know, I think it's just kind of keeping up with it it's a little you know like I said it can be tiring it is, but you make sure you take that picture with your new store and you you know launch that and share it on social media and all sorts of stuff so we've been kind of uh, great at doing that and it does seem to work people love that well yeah and that was something that really impressed me as I kept seeing you post all these pictures of you 
uh, with the salsa and all these different locations. So I was, I was like, wow, that is a genius idea. So, well, it's kind of, yeah, it's sort of like we, we came about with it. Like, where do you think the Blonde Bomber is today? There is a couple places that were really hard to figure out. And we sort of, um, we said to our, our people that follow us, we're like, if you can figure out where we are, you know, we'll give you free salsa, you know? And there was one that just stumped everybody. But I realized that um, it, all the locations we go to, it was really fun. It's kind of celebrating Colorado too. It's really fun. I haven't been to some of these places that I've gotten to go to to deliver salsa. And we live in an amazingly beautiful state. Oh, crazy. I know. I love it. Yeah. And some of the places I that you um, have been to, I never even heard of. And that, <laughs> but then that actually, that's good because that highlights those businesses, right? Yeah. Cause you know, you drop it off at a, like, let's say I was up in Keystone and then you come back towards Breckenridge and I dropped it off at Breckenridge, but you know, it's really fun and they, they love that because we have a following. And so if I share, you know, if I share this, the, a picture of the salsa in front of their sign and, and let everybody know like, wow, you know, you can get it at, you know, at the, the market in um, Telluride or what have you. Um, then I share it with my guys and then everybody in my circle gets to know it. And then everybody in Telluride, of course, gets to know it. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun how you know, it, it just expands from there. Yeah, and that, I mean, that's just like a lot of, you know, different things too, is you, like this podcast, I share it, I share it with my audience, and if someone right. likes, if someone likes it, then they might share it with their friends, and, and so on and so forth, and then, uh, you know, just, you know, I want to highlight, you know, local businesses too, um, super, super fun. And I'll share it on my website too. that will be really fun and blonde bomber website. It'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. And so, you know, I just think, you know, in the advertising business in the radio, um, I love doing, um, you know, cross promoting advertising like this and you get people involved and then everybody wins, everybody gets their word out or, or maybe their, whatever they're selling or their restaurant or their whatever and so it works really well everybody kind of wins it's a nice yeah. thing to do yeah well um let's talk a little bit about the salsa itself you know okay. um so i know that for me i can't really do a lot of salsa but i tried your salsa and it was really it was really good it was spicy and i yeah. think if i'm gonna you know um the, the next time I have it, I'd like to try it like on eggs or something, you know. Um, there you go. But did, how, you you try, know, did, did you try the coming in hot, the 64 yeah. or the medium? I tried the hot one. I I need to try the medium. Oh, I think you might be a medium girl. Yeah. If it's a little bit hot, you might want the medium. I don't think you had the medium yet. So yeah, I'll have to go buy myself the medium and try that. I'll bring you some. <laughs> We live oh, close. I'll bring yeah. you some. Yes, we do live close. Um, yeah, I'll have to try that. Um, okay. But, you know, um, so, I mean, how did the salsa idea even come about? You were just, you just love salsa or what is it? <laughs> well, that's a good question, right? How did it come about? Well, so, you know, Brian works up in Silverton and he's a builder and he's got a whole really badass crew up there. And, and anyway, they, they, um, I've been making salsa for like 20 years. I, I developed a recipe that everybody loved. You know, it was one of those things where, I don't know if you have one of those things in your life, but it's one of those things for me that if I brought salsa with me to a barbecue and some chips and stuff, it, it, inevitably somebody would be like, oh my God, that's the best salsa I've ever tasted. How do you make it? You know, I want some, will you make me some? So, you know, I always made it for friends and family and all that. But then um, the, the crew, I brought it over for Brian's crew and then they were eating it and friends of course too, but they, he would go up to Silverton and come home and go, you know, honey, they went like, I've got like 15 more jars you need to make. And I mean, I'm at home and it's with this big, huge pot and, you know, making and cutting up all these peppers. And I mean, it takes you hours to make a, a bat that big. And I would, 
I'd put them all in and in the current jars and I'd seal them and I'd put them in ice and in a big, huge thing. Cause you know, I didn't have a, a, a you know, a, a commercial kitchen or anything. So it was just me in my kitchen and I put them in and had to be chilled. And he'd go up and um, he'd come back that day and he'd have zero left. He would have given them all out or sold them. And uh, he'd say, well, we need like 15 more. And finally, I said, Brian, I can't keep up with this. This is nuts, right? And it got just really popular. And everybody knows Brian and I. So anyway, um, after a while, it was kind of a problem. I was like, how am I going to keep up with this? And everybody wants one. And so I took, uh, I went down to the Artisan Food Company uh, down there. They, ha they do everybody's stuff, like ska and you know, the bigger guys. And I just went in, I said, I have one salsa and it's just me. And would you maybe consider doing mine? And, you know, he makes salsa itself too for their brand. And I figured it was kind of a long shot. And he said, why don't you bring me down a sample and I'll let you know. So I left him a sample and, um, and he just loved it. And he, said, he called me back. He said, we'd love mm -hmm. to, we'd love to do your salsa. So, you know, it's a process. You have to give him your recipe and that has to be weighed and all sorts of stuff. So I kind of, redid my recipe to where it would come out as my recipe with like weighed items and stuff. And then um, they would make a sample. And then I go down to the side, like, nope, needs more salt, needs less this. Uh, I did, salt was one of those issues. It was too much and too little. And finally, after about, um, you know, four or five tries, they got it just right. And in the meantime, I was drawing you know, label stuff and working with a graphic designer because I do wonderful artwork, but if it's freehand, but I'm not a graphic designer on the, you know, you need you need it to be done graphically. So I um, worked with them and got the, got the label designed and then uh, they sent it out and got, um, you know, it needs to be tested for, you know, uh, what's in it, um, it, how many calories are in it, all that, all that good stuff. So I did all that and uh, and when it was ready and the labels were ready and they made me my first, I think it was maybe 12 cases of hot salsa first. And mm -hmm. I just remember it was popular right away because um, I remember Mark called me the next day and said, or maybe two days, but I think it was the next day. And he said, oh, I've just sold a salsa. Blonde Bomber Salsa is in a customer's hands. And I wrote him back and I said, I just sold four cases to Nature's Oasis. And he oh. was like, what? You know, and I remember that was really a, a great sale because, you know, my, my mom is a big natural food enthusiast. I, I've been raised in a really healthy family environment as, as far as like food goes. Mm -hmm. And um I just remember look, when Nature's Oasis was about four, I thought, well, maybe there is something to this. So, and then it yeah. just kept going, you know, it just kept on going. So that was sort of the beginning. And then, of course, the hot, this is the hot one, the red lid. Mm -hmm. And the hot one is too hot for everybody. But mm -hmm. then this is the, this was supposed to be a mild, but we like sauce, hot sauce, so hot salsa. So it ended up being a medium. But we're mm -hmm. working on a mild one. So this one's called Just When You Thought She Couldn't Be Cooler. And then our, um, our mild one's going to be Take a Walk on the Mild Side. So we're coming up with that one soon. So, you know, we're figuring that one out. So I'm working with samples and everything now with that. So, yeah. Wow. And so that's kind of how it started. And, you know, um, I just get up in the morning. I keep going. One, one time, Ryan and I went on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday and did a big loop up to like, you know, Breckenridge and then back, which is a long ways. And it took, you know, the three days to drop off samples and stuff. But then we got back and I get, I get a phone call the next day while I'm working um, for, for four more orders, but they're all up Salida, Buena Vista, you know, a bit of a ways. And Brian looks at me and says, well, how are you going to do that one? And I said, well, I guess I'm getting up at three in the morning and getting on the road. And, and that's exactly what I did. I just went up. And I was at the first uh, place at like quarter to eight, dropped them all off and headed back and was home to, uh, to do all my X-Rock stuff. So, you wow. know, you got to do it. You know, I remember that night, 
It's like, you tired? I said, oh yeah, I'm tired. It's time to go to bed. So yeah, just put it in, you do it. Just go for it, I guess. Wow, that is very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is a lot of hard work but you know what it just goes to show that you know if you want to make something successful you want to share it with the world you know you got to put in the time and the work right you do yeah and you know uh rosa the thing is it's like you know when it is your your creation it's kind of your baby it's been your baby for for a long time and people are responding and showing you a lot of love it makes it really fun and it gives you that energy to keep on going and just um, just put in that extra effort, you know? So I would advise anybody that has something special in their life that maybe makes, they make that makes them special, that they should maybe share that with people because you, you never know. It might be something that you could um, grow a business from, you know, and, and uh, it's neat. Like your podcasts are so fun and I watch them all the time. And I think it's great that you're doing what you love. I think if everybody yeah. sort of did what they love, they'd, everybody would be a lot happier. You oh know? my God. Yes. Yeah, I, I, so, I so agree. <laughs> I know. And that's what I've, I've kind of um, come to the realization um, later in my life here um, is that you can just, you know, if you want to, you can work for somebody else. But you know, the true joy comes in, um, of course you gotta make money to survive and all that, but yeah, find something you're passionate about and how how you can help the world, you know? And that's what I, yeah. and that's what I love to do is I'm a health coach. So I, I wanna help people get healthier, but I also wanna yeah. share these kind of stories of people changing their lives, you know, through, um, diet and lifestyle, but also a story like yours where you're changing your life right now through just, yes. share, just sharing what you love, you know? Well, it was funny. And, and on that note, I, I went through a very hard period when I lost my father. My mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Um, there was just a lot of, it was a big, bad story. And um, it made me really sad. And out of, you know, 2020, it all sort of happened you know, the pandemic and all of that too. And, and it was really funny. A lot of people really had a hard time. We all had a hard time, you know, but, um, but it seems like when I get kind of enclosed like that, and I've, I've had a few experiences in my life where it almost brings out my creativity. It's like, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's kind of one of those moments where it just, it, you know, spurs it on. And one of the greatest things that came out of 2020 was the salsa. It was really fun. And, what made it so fun is um, when I go to take it to people, you know, Brian, Brian's whole line is, do you like salsa? And everybody goes, yeah, you know, it's like, what do you mean? We love salsa. And it was this wonderful moment where people would get so happy. And then they'd see you and go, oh, it's the salsa people. We love those guys, you know? And so it became this happy wonderful business it was like oh I love the salsa business everybody's happy to see you you know it's kind of a fun thing and so that was the true blessing that came out of 2020 for me you know um there was a lot of neat things my daughter got married and stuff and so at the end of oh actually on 20, 2021 she got married but as the two years kind of collided into each other 20 and 21 um I just kept going with the salsa. It was like too much fun and why not? You know, so that's what I did. Yeah. I mean, the only, and the whole point was it made me healthier. It made me happier. You yeah. know, like you were saying, find something that makes you happy, which turns into healthy, which turns into a lot of great stuff, right? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. mental health is a huge thing, right? It's It's huge. And especially right now, it seems like it's more prevalent than ever because a lot of people aren't doing what they want. They aren't, they aren't fulfilling, you know, mm -hmm. you know, they aren't finding their joy. You They're know? not. And that doesn't mean you got to quit your job and just, you know, <laughs> um, you know, do you do whatever. But, you know, I always advise people to if you if you really love something and you want to start like a side business or a side hustle, you can do that while working. You know, oh, and, then, 100%. and yeah. then you can grow, you can grow it. But when you when you take the time to do those things, 
um, that you love, you'll just be so much happier, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, and what was really weird, Rosa, is that, like, well, you've been down to x Rock because I met you when you were in the, um, the demolition, what well, not the demolition derby, the um, roller girls. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I think of demolition, roller girls, kind of the same thing. But anyway, you were so cute. I've known you for a while from the radio, but it's like, um, it's funny, you, you get really happy in one part of your life and it definitely bleeds over into your other side of your life because this is busy, as busy as it is, X Rock is super busy too. We've had some of our best months, you know, um, and in, in months that probably shouldn't have been our best months, you know, we're, we're going through some of these hard, hard times that we have. And, um, and it's funny, it's just kind of one of those energetic things where you're already at level 10, you might as well just keep going and work at level 10 on this one. And um, it's been fun. And I've kind of coupled up with a couple uh, neat local businesses like Happy Pappies. That's a new pizza restaurant, you know. And so yeah. we it's kind of fun to be the blonde bomber in Happy Pappy. And it was kind of fun to do a few things with him. And, you know, like I said, it always promotes everybody. So it's kind of fun to do that. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I, um, now I was going to ask you, I know that you're in a lot of stores and some, and some restaurants and stuff. What now, what, what other local restaurants around here are carry your salsa? Restaurants or stores? Um, restaurants. Okay, well. Is, is there a lot of restaurants or is it more like stores? Well, like up in. We have we have it in the Coffee Bear that's up in Silverton. We mm -hmm. have it um, now. You know the Olive Oil Company. We have it in the first thing we did. So when you get it in restaurants, you need to have it kind of packaged in bulk. You don't want to sell them, you know, a sixteen ounce jar of salsa to serve. You you can sell them those to have in their restaurant and to sell to their patrons. Once they taste it and eat it and they serve it, then they can buy it. But um, we haven't gotten them packed bulk packages yet, but that's coming. But we do have a brewery. We have one brewery all the, on the way to Denver, Mad, um, Mad Jack's Brewery, and he serves it with his jalapeno something beer. And um, it's a hot beer and he serves the hot salsa with it. So he's really cool. Um, mainly around here, we have it in all the local, you know, Nature's Oasis, biggest one, but you know, Sunnyside Farms, um, PJs up north, they sell it like crazy. You know, Needles Market's one of our biggest clients. They sell it all the time. I love those guys up there. And of course, PJs just amazing too. So, um, but yeah, I mean, if I go down the list, there's a lot, there's a lot of, yeah. Clients. yeah. yeah. No, it's I've I've seen it. I and I will. We go to gazpachos like every Friday night. <laughs> I love gazpachos, but I've often yeah. I've often wondered if a Mexican restaurant would want to carry it because I just learned that not all Mexican restaurants make their own salsa. They sometimes they'll buy it from a, a an outside vendor and they serve it in their restaurant, which I find interesting. And so that makes an opening for Blind Bomber. You know, well, so I mean, that's, looking into those things, right? That, yeah. Well, that's what I was wondering because I know, yeah. you know, I, I, you often wonder, oh, you know, when you go to a restaurant, do they make their own, you know, condiments or different things, or are they just, or do they outside source it? You know, and I can understand outside sourcing, um, to right. save, save so much time and money, and um, yeah, and so. Well, there's I, a yeah, there's a few restaurants like I'm not, not going to name them, but I happen to know that they're they they serve some of the most wonderful items that, that they're kind of my favorites. And I remember asking like, oh, my God, how do you make that? And so I was like, oh, these are just bought in bulk and I toss them in the oven or whatever. I was like, really? Oh, my gosh, I had no idea. You know, I guess I just assumed that every restaurant, you know, gets in hours early and you know, I don't know, Gordon Ramsay kind of thing and makes it to order. But um, but I guess that's not the case. You know, you got hungry skiers and things. You better better get it get on it, you know? Well, so, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that would be a good market for you. Yeah, the different Mexican restaurants around here. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know? I secretly have told Brian. I said, wouldn't it be fun to have like a little, a little tiny like food truck? Maybe one that you pull behind, that you just kind of flip open and have hot chips and salsa. You know, to serve to people. It would be really fun. And um, who knows what the future will bring? Maybe we'll just drive around with a little you know, pop up camper and serve chips to the masses with salsa. I don't oh, know. yeah. We'll see. Yes, I could, I could see, especially in the summer months here in Durango, right? All the different that be fun? festivals. Yeah, you could, and... yeah you, and, or you could just show up at the river, you know, or, you know, all sorts of places. I think um, Colorado, Durango especially loves to eat. There are a lot of foodies around here that like good food and good quality food, such as yourself. I was really proud that our, our sauce is really good quality, made from fresh ingredients and there's no additives, no preservatives, no nothing like that. So it's really, really good. Well, yeah. that's what I saw, you know, on the ingredients too, is because, you know, I have a lot of food sensitivities and issues with my, my digestion. And so I always have to look at all labels to see if there's any added sugar and chemicals and all that fun stuff. Well, and everybody the, should. Well, yeah, everybody should. Exactly. And I love right? that you're, you have all clean ingredients. Very you know? much. You can yep. pronounce the words. <laughs> <And that's> the <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like my, my favorite ice cream is when I don't eat ice cream much. But if I do, it's like that really natural ice cream that everything is just milk and, you know, the whole thing. It's wonderful. So I just kind of like that. I was raised that way. My, I give all the credit to my mom. She was wonderful that way. So, you know, um, it's just by choice. I like to eat healthy by choice, you know, but I've been doing really good. I've been eating so healthy, sort of an anti-inflammatory diet. And, um, you know, I've lost like almost 12 pounds now, feeling really good. It's like perfect time to get, get in shape for before the summer months come, you know? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, anti-inflammatory diet is where what I'm all about too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because yeah, I, th I think a lot of us we are um, suffering from a lot of inflammation. That's why we have joint pain and headaches and yep, all these things. But we just we don't know. We don't register that that's inflammation um, until it's no. really really bad. You know. <laughs> I know. And, you know, there's so many things that are good for you. Uh, you know, the keto diet is such a popular thing right now. But for me, I lost a tremendous amount of weight on a keto diet. Um, the problem with that for, for me personally, not in general, but for me personally, my cholesterol went through the roof. I'm not used to eating such high fats, you know, a lot of red meat, things like that, which, mm -hmm. which are, are high in protein and they kind of advocate you do that. So I just decided to go back to what I knew was healthy, which is a lot of whole grains and, um, you know, not, not cutting out all of that and certainly not fruit. I know, I know sugar is not good, even natural sugar, but berries are so anti, you know, grapes, berries, antioxidants, anti-inflammatory. They're very good for you on so many levels. And so I think if you pick the right things, it could be, it can be really beneficial, you know? To, oh yeah. <laughs> And I think, um, you know, for each person, you need to figure out what is the right diet for you. I agree. You know, like, you know, um, certain diets don't work for everyone, you know, whether it's a vegan yeah. or a keto or a carnivore or whatever, um, you have to kind of um, experiment, you know, try different yes. things, see what works uh, for you, because it's the sherry diet, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I always tell my um, my clients. I say, well, you know, we we can try to eliminate certain things and see how you feel, and then, but at, at the end of the day, it's your body, and you know exactly what works for your body. You really do. Oh, you do everything from should you, um, you know, should you drink whole milk or switch to skim milk? It might make you feel better, but or you know, completely go to oat milk or coconut milk or almond milk and cut out the dairy completely. You know, um, I remember too, somebody told me, you know, yogurt was like eating ice cream pretty much. And I thought, well, 
kind of not though, because it's got some wonderful, uh, you know, qualities about it. And yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't eat yogurt by the time, but I do think that some yogurt is good for you with um, all this stuff for your gut health and everything. So, you know, it's it, like you said, I think you find a good balance that works for you and you know, you, you know, what works. I mean, you know, certainly, you know, a boxed pizza from the grocery store is probably not your best choice, you know, and then. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think if it's a whole food, right, if it's a whole yeah. food, I think that's the way, the way to go. If people I would agree. just take away the sugar, take away the flour, the white, I would tell people take away the sugar, white sugar, white flour, and incorporate yes. just whole food. And, yes. and you'll just feel so much better just doing that, you know. Totally, right? I, you know, nuts and. Um, all sorts of good stuff that that's just whole foods and from the earth. My favorite thing right now is microgreens. I love uh, I love the crazy green, you know, sprouty things. They're amazing and wonderful. Yeah, and so, yeah, that's kind of a newer thing. And it used to be, uh, you know, just sprouts and bean sprouts, things like that. But now they have microgreens and really cool, like you know, salt that's has minerals and it's kind of alive with all sorts of things and it's green and yummy it's, it, these are local people that are doing this too so there's some really great um great things out there that you can buy if you just look for it in your local great you know the co-op or, or any of the natural food stores they have wonderful um things that are locally made so it's great and and you're supporting the locals which is really well, that's what I, love. I love to do that you know, that's why I, I like, too. yeah, that's why I wanted to highlight you today. Well, um, what, what would you like to leave as a closing statement to my audience? Um, some oh, words yeah. of wisdom from a, a, a wonderful person who started her own food company. <laughs> Do you know, I think, I think the best thing to leave everybody with is, um, I have I have single-handedly, well, Brian and I together have inspired people that were sort of stuck. You know, I I remember somebody said, "Oh my gosh, is that your you? Did did you make that?" And and I said, "Yeah, you know." And and they'll say, "Oh, well, I have this idea. I've been wanting to make ice cream from like avocado and berries and creamy and not so sweet like everything on the market." And I said, "Well, just do it." And they kind of looked at me and I said, no, you really just make it and share it with your friends and share the love. It's like amazing. And if you have a dream, I mean, you know, we're only on the planet for so long, Rosa, you might as well just like give it a shot and <laughs> give it a try and do something that you love. Uh, you know, whether it be playing a guitar or piano or, you know, my son's a musician, he's awesome. And I just remember, you know, um, when the kids were growing up and stuff, you kind of see these things and then that make them so happy. I'm so proud of the fact that Ty makes a living as a musician because that's his love of his life. Alexandra is a, a she she teaches children because she's like the angel of the planet, you know. And I just think if you have something that you love and you want to do, you know, share it with the world. And it's funny people can really um, resonate when you're. When you're honest, when it's when it's a true thing that you're you're trying to share, so I would say do it, and you'd be amazed, and maybe change your life. Wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my life what I think it should be instead of just doing what you think you have to to get by. You know, it might be a little hard work, but that never hurt anybody. No, right? no, <laughs> you know if. You know what they say, you know, um, a diamond is made under pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yes. you know, I can attest to that. So, yeah. Yeah. So make, make, make some diamonds, right? Yes, make some diamonds. You are meant <laughs> to shine and sparkle, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and one last question. Um, I should ask this earlier, but um, the salsa, is it only... Can you only get it in Colorado or are there different states that you can get it in? Well, no. Well, so we're in a couple stores in New Mexico. We're okay. also branching out into places like, you know, um, New Santa Fe and 
Utah and things like that, which are our neighbors. But um, but you can get it online at blondebombersalsa.com. And so we have an online website. We're getting orders. It's really fun because we're getting orders from New Jersey and the East Coast and Florida. And you happen to know that you don't know these people. And so they're finding out you know, about Von Bomber, maybe from friends or online or what have you. And um, so we're branching out all over because places like Iowa and things like that, they really don't have peppers and things. So there's not much salsa for them to enjoy. And I'm finding that they're, those are places that probably would really enjoy having the salsa. So we're working our way that way, but we're still distributing everything and stuff. So, so, you know, we're getting there, but we haven't even gotten all through Colorado yet, you know? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I know it, it's probably hard to distribute to different, you know, states. I know, um, I think for a, when I first moved here, I was a beer drinker, you know, right. and I, right. I I don't drink anymore. But I, I remember think, you know, um, being really into the ska beer. And right. then I, I learned at that time, anyway, I think they're in other places now. But mm -hmm. they like you. They couldn't distribute it to different states at that time when I moved here. Um, yeah, dis distribution is a is a is going to be one of those little milestones with us too. It's a learning curve because yeah, it's it's a little mind boggling. How do you get distributors to take your stuff and take it everywhere? And how does that even work? So we're working on that one right now, and maybe a commercial shipping you know, contracts so we can send it to people without it being really expensive to ship. Yeah, yeah. But one one step at a time, you're doing amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So keep up the good work. And, um, and I will talk to you soon, Sherry. Okay. Bye, Rosa. Thank you for having me on your show. You keep rocking. I will. You too. You keep rocking it. <laughs> I will, sweetie. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.